All right, next up we have the 84 kilo national champion, Michelle Robbins, and her father, which was her coach and handler. Greg Robbins. Greg Robbins. And uh, to start off with, we'd just like to give a little summary of how the day went for you, and um, this is a chance for you to also talk about how well she did. Well, go ahead, Michelle. Um, well, for me, um, I felt pretty good at first when I came, and then um, I would say, I just started to get tired towards the end. I didn't fuel up properly as well as I should have when deadlifts came around. Yeah, I think she could have used some more Gatorade or something like that. You know, her diets are really good and her training, she trains very hard, extremely hard. In fact, to the point of passing out sometimes, which is which scares me. But I think she could do better if she had something more to fuel her up through the long process. Because even though her workouts are about an hour, an hour and a half, it's more consistent where this is spread out over a period, which is much more difficult for all you lifters. Because you have to anticipate that you're going to have your energy, you know, right out of the chute being really good. And if you don't, you know, drink or consume something to keep those levels up, it's so easy to get exhausted by the end. Aside from all the stress and anxiety of just being up there and doing that, it's really remarkable. Um, my name is Natalie. I have a I'm curious, Michelle. I think you're relatively new to the sport of powerlifting like, as a competitor. Is that true? That is true. Yes. Yeah. Um, do you have an athletic background? Um, before this, I used to be um, into dancing. I was on my high school dance team, and then before that, I did gymnastics a little bit, but I wasn't really the best at it. Yeah, it's just uh, very impressive to see you. As a new lifter, putting up numbers that some a lot of people, you know, will never achieve or work, you know, decades to hit. Um, so I just, yeah, I was very impressed by your performance. Even though, you know, maybe you didn't feel like you had the best day. You won a national title, I think, at your first nationals. Um, that's super amazing. And yeah, I hope you can be proud of yourself and proud of your performance. Thank you so much. She's her own worst critic, really, <laughs> like most of us. Mm -hmm. And I, I try to tell her, you're just doing amazing. She puts up lifts well. I never did, but in any case, I mean, it's quite impressive for a female, you know, to be able to do that kind of, that kind of numbers. I'm very proud of you. Um, <clears throat> congratulations on winning the national title. Um, national champion has a nice ring to it. Um, so I hope that excites you. Um, just looking at the score sheet after your second attempt in the squat, you missed that, and you chose to remain at that weight um, can you discuss the rationale behind doing that? And the only reason I'm asking is because some competitors, regardless of the reason for missing, you know, in the heat of battle, will sometimes think I've got to go up. Um, for me, I just, it was a technical error, I felt. And all I needed to do was just fix that, and then I would hit the depth to get it. And that's exactly what I did. <laughs> <laughs> and that was a good decision. Thank you. So with this being your uh, first Powerlift America Nationals, what's uh, a couple of takeaways that both of you have uh, from this competition? Um, I would say for next time, I need to eat better. <laughs> <laughs> I enjoy um, the people that do this, you know, really. Uh, I mean, I did kickboxing for a while, not really competitively, but it's it's kind of the same thing you get this kind of like a, a brotherhood of people Absolutely. working for people because I came in here really not knowing that much about weightlifting and I left feeling like you know this is great it's like a family you know one of the coaches who was coaching um, uh, one of his female and male lifters was nice enough to help us out and so it was really wonderful, and I think that really helped Michelle out too, because she was going nervous, thinking, you know, I'm not going to have a coach on site to help me, you know, push through all of this. And you know, it's one thing to have your dad or your mom or something there, but it's quite different when you have someone who's just your coach. It's kind of a different thing, you know, because I mean, emotionally, I'm really attached to to my kids and want to make sure they succeed. So, yeah, thank you. So suffice to say, you guys will be back. I don't think we'll ever not come back, right? <laughs> I think we'll always wanna, come. <laughs> you like collecting those medals. I do. Yeah. She did Raw Nationals in uh, 2014 mm -hmm. when you were 17, right? I was 16. 16. He went down to Aurora, Colorado. But, yeah. Were you? Yeah. And she, she wasn't as focused as she is now, but she did remarkably well. 
but I think she's taking it much more serious now. Mm -hmm. I definitely am. Yeah, that's great. Along those lines, Michelle, do you have a coach? I do. A virtual coach. Who is your coach? Um, Claire is my virtual. Claire's I? Yep. Oh, awesome. You're in good hands. Very good hands. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's great. My name is Bryce. Can you talk us through the training process on the way here? How are things going in the last month or so? And how did that set you up for expectations about what numbers you might want to hit at this competition? Well, for me, um, I was deadlifting in the 500s. Um, no problem. And I just last week pulled 525 for a pretty easy single. Yeah. And that's why I was kind of surprised when today my deadlifts, they just were not feeling on point as they should. I think I just was like, I was really tired at that point because I was so focused on wanting to hit my squats and get the right depth on them. Because yeah. I've always had trouble with that. Mm -hmm. So you emptied the gas tank a little bit early, and then maybe you were kind of just trying to get through the rest of the meat. Yeah. Okay. Okay. That's something you'll for sure get better at. Oh, um, just along those lines, um, you did something which is very difficult to do. Um, you missed your first deadlift, and then you came back and got it when, you know, to everyone there, it looked like you'd missed it on strength. So um, I guess tell us about how you were able to do that. Well, I have a really good support system. My dad, my sister, and her boyfriend, they came and told me, hey, you can do this. You, you've got this. You can do this. You've done this before. You've done this a hundred times. You've done more weight than this. You know, you just have to get into it and do it. It and didn't hurt you had a bottle of Gatorade, did it? That too. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. I have a question for, uh, for Dad. Sure. Obviously, when you're well, handling your daughter in the back and you're, you know, helping load and, and spotting and all that, all that good stuff, um, is there any point, especially when she's, let's say she's uh, missed the attempt at, at some point, is there any, uh, any point for a father like, all right, do I want to hold her back a little bit or do I want to push her forward a little bit? I mean, I want to kind of know what goes on in your head in terms of like the strategy in, in order to, you know, kind of keep her, keep her head in the game. When it comes to Michelle and her lifting, I probably would err on the side of caution. Mm -hmm. She's the one that wants to push the heavy weights, not me. I didn't want to ever make it to be the case. I wanted this to be as much her game as anything. Um, I think it's just wonderful that she tries so hard, but it's scary. I think she pushes herself way too hard. Like I said, she's had a few meets where she's come close to passing out or passed out. And, of course, that could be just, you know, proper hydration things right. there. But I think before when she had other coaches and they would work with her before Claire... Uh, especially the ones that were actually on site, they said that she was probably her own worst critic and that they didn't have to push her, say, Michelle, you know, you could probably go a little heavier. Michelle would just want it so bad and would push herself to go heavier, and that sometimes had me nervous. I have a question. Um, you mentioned that you've trained on site with, with coaches. Do you train at a, a powerlifting gym? I actually train at, my, at home. Oh, okay. Cool. Mm -hmm. Do you think that um, does, does Competing on competition equipment, calibrated plates with a specific bar, does that uh, change anything for you? Or, or have you considered training with uh, competition equipment going into a meet before? Um, I think for me, I just need to have plates that are like more even because some of mine are a bit uneven at home. <laughs> well, you're national champion now. So. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You're doing more <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I think what we have at home is cozy, but I'd like to see you more out in a regular powerlifting gym. It's just tough, you know, with work and everything mm -hmm. and everything else that she does to get to find the perfect fit mm -hmm. that's close by and that has a nice vibe to it as well, Absolutely. you know. But yeah. this is fine equipment, what we saw here today, yeah. you know, so it's great. I, I have one more question. Sorry, Matt, do you have a well, question? Right? Okay. Um, I know, so you actually did the same qualifying meet as Bryce. Do you? You maybe didn't even Farmstrong. know we were there. The Farmstrong meet in Arizona. Mm -hmm. uh, we were there. That's how Bryce qualified. That's Mike, who just took second in the 120s. He qualified at that meet as well. Um, so I, I, you were kind of on my radar. Just I knew who you were. Um, I think you qualified at the set in the 76 kilo class from that meet, and then you moved up to 84. Yes. What's the what was the rationale there? Is there anything or? You just decided not to diet to 76? <laughs> I just decided not to diet to 76. Okay.
That's a good enough reason. Yep. <laughs> along, along that question, uh, as far as diet and everything, I know you mentioned prior as far as like you know the nutrition, her kind of running out of, of gas toward the end. Mm -hmm. Are you gonna, guys going to make any type of adjustments? I mean, obviously going forward in terms of like nutrition and, and maybe just game planning going into like the, the next week? Yeah, I think she might converse with Claire. Because Claire does nutrition as well, or we might just, my wife and I might research it for her, right. you know. But um, I think that's really where we're finding the problem now. I would have liked to have found it a couple of meets prior, but we really didn't know. Right, well, you don't know until you know. You don't know, and you assume, oh, okay, if you've got 20 minutes between your next lift, that's fine. Because at home, you would pound them out. I mean, she doesn't take a lot of rest for, for, for a power lifter, quite honestly. Mm -hmm. And so now we're learning because of these issues with her nutrition and so forth happening here at the meet. Now we actually can pinpoint the problem and Absolutely. hopefully rectify it. Absolutely. The more information you have, the easier it's going to make Absolutely. And like I said, a lot of you guys and other lifters out there give us good pointers, especially for me, which is nice. It's a great community. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Congratulations. Um, yeah, congratulations. Thank you. Um, we're going to wrap this one, but um, congratulations, and we'll look forward to seeing you at Nationals next year. Great. Thank you. Right.